That Kevin Show with Kevin McCullough. And welcome back to Times Square. Kevin McCullough, very glad to have you with us on That Kevin Show. And you know that uh, not only do we take on the big headlines of the day and talk about the biggest stories and try to have the best guests, but we also love to uh, jump into the culture and see what's being done there. And this is a very important year. In fact, it's the 80th commemoration of the invasion of um, France by the Allies on D-Day and everything that uh, took place there. Um, th this year, they'll observe the 80th commemoration of that. And it had been my dream a year ago to uh, be able to take a trip of those of you watching and listening to go see this 80th commemoration, but we didn't, we didn't, we didn't stir up the interest quite the right way. So we're going to, we're going to shelve the going to Normandy and we had London and Paris and all that involved in the same uh, trip. We'll, we'll revisit that uh, in the near future, I promise. But someone who is going to be there this year because she uh, is, is, uh, she very cares very much about uh, the importance of what happened there, but also understanding it from the perspective of not only being an American herself, but talking to the Normans, the people that live in the region, whose families to this day still celebrate the American GIs and the allies who came and uh, set them free from the horrors of Nazi Germany. Her name is Christian Taylor and she joins us now. Hello, Christian. <laughs> Hi, Kevin. Thank you so much for having me. It's a joy to have you here. Um, thank you for coming on. Um, now, a friend of mine told me a few weeks ago, he said, you know, I know you love France and you love Normandy and you love the World War II stuff. And it's true. I think it's one of the most important periods of history in terms of how the whole globe was reset coming out of World War II. Um, but he said, you've got to you've got to talk to my friend who produced and directed The Girl Who Wore Freedom. And that is, in fact, your um, your masterpiece that you have produced on the uh, the life of some of the people in Normandy. Um, welcome to the show. But how did you get involved? What, what what was it about this story that captured your heart and imagination? I really appreciate you caring about it because my goal was that we would you know introduce Americans to what was actually happening over there in France. I think some people know. But my father was in the Reagan administration. I grew up in politics. I you know, went to parades. I really considered myself a patriotic person. I loved history. And I had no idea what hmm. was happening over in Normandy every year since 1945 until my son, who was in the 101st Airborne Division, had just returned from Afghanistan. And he was given the opportunity to be part of an honor guard to go over to Normandy for the 71st commemorations. Okay. And I thought he was going to go there to just reenact. He called me and he said, Mom, I'm I'm the army sending me to Armini or to France. And I said, We're going to France. And he said, No, Mom, I'm going to France. And I said, Well, I'm going to. I'm going to watch what you're doing. I don't care what it is. And I had never been to France. I didn't know the language, didn't, couldn't drive, you know, never done that before internationally. So you know, your kids are going to do something, you're going to be there. So that's what I did. I followed him. And uh, what I discovered when I got there blew my mind. Um, he told me to meet him in this town of Carenton. And I now know it's where hundreds of American lives were sacrificed to free this small town. And I met him there. And when I got there, everyone was dressed as either American GIs or 1940s civilians. Mm -hmm. And these American GIs from the 101st Airborne Division were walking among them and people were stopping them and wanting their autographs and wanting to take pictures with them. And they were waving American flags. And I just thought, what is happening? Mm. But these French people were so grateful for their liberation and people that lived it were there that they wanted to thank the modern day soldiers who walked in the boots of the soldiers from 44 to say thank you for our liberation. I found out these French people raised money to bring our veterans back there just to thank them. And I, I in fact met a family who was alive in 1944 and they told me their story of liberation. Wow. And I learned so many since then of people that lost lives or loved ones were killed and yet they were still so grateful I was in the American sector, and so they just talked about, they knew GI's names, they knew their patches, they knew their units, and they have spent the last 80 years thanking them. One person said, I kept 10% of my memories for the GI's in my grandmother's field. 
for my whole life. And that's how they were. And it blew me away. And so I've spent the last 10 years of my life trying to tell this story to the American people through this film, hoping that when people see it, they will understand that what we did during that time when we set these people free, it impressed you know, upon these people the importance of democracy and the importance of sacrifice. We sacrificed our young men, thousands of them, so these people could be free and it changed their lives, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's what we celebrated. It's what we celebrated this past weekend, right? And, um, but I just think as Americans, we wave the flag and we say, I wanna be free, but until you're occupied, I don't think you can truly understand what it really, really feels like to be free. And I feel like if we can look through the eyes of the French people, and in this film, we hear their stories. We hear their stories of loss, but we also hear their stories of humor with what the GIs did with them and how they played with them and how they built bonds with them. And so it's an uplifting love story. I say it's a love story between these two countries. Um, it's also a healing story. When veterans see my film, they come up to me afterwards usually and begin to unpack their own stories. Mm. So this film really, I feel, is a way to facilitate communication between the civilian and the military community because the Normans taught me how to ask questions of veterans so that they will open it up and share their stories. And so yeah. our film helps facilitate that communication between those two communities. The film is called The Girl Who Wore Freedom, and you can actually get it um, at most all of your favorite screen, uh, uh, streaming services, Netflix uh, being the exception. But you can get it on Apple. You can get it on Hulu. You can find it on Amazon. Uh, Not Hulu. I would encourage you to, uh, to uh, go and see it. I'm sorry. Not Hulu, but Amazon, Apple TV, YouTube, Google Play, Kino Now. Okay. Uh, it's on a lot of them. And the great news is this is coming out before D-Day, right? So it is in theaters across the U.S. We're having our first national release. And people can see it maybe in their own theaters. So they just need to go to thegirlwhowarefreedom.com okay. and look up, find a screening at the top of the page. And we have an interactive map that will pull up the theaters where the show nice. is playing. Yeah. The girl who wore freedom .com and um, the screening details will be there at the top of the page. The girl yeah. who wore freedom .com. Um, We're going to take a break in just a second and then uh, come back with my guest, Christian Taylor. I guess one of the things that I am uh, fascinated about, and we can't um, obviously tell the story of the entire movie, but there is this young girl who has an American flag um, as part of her uh, wardrobe. And I'm guessing that this is who the girl, the who the film is named after. But maybe you can tell us a little bit about her and what her story is um, when we come back. We're speaking sure. with Christian Taylor, and again, the the movie is called The Girl Who Wore Freedom. You can go to the girl who wore freedom dot com, the girl who wore freedom dot com, and uh, select your screening opportunity, and also see the trailer and uh, get a better feel for what the film is all about. Kevin McCullough is my name. We're very glad to have you with us as we're coming right back from Times Square. Yeah, Kevin. Kevin McCullough. 